How's it going, everybody? This is Alex Caceres, and you're listening to Story of the Fight. Will, how's it going, man? I'm half asleep <laughs> right going? now, dude. I'm half Still? asleep. These fights were on. Yeah, dude, these fights were on late last night. Well, that's what happens when there's three championship fights. That's what happens when there's three championship fights. But I did get Even some though... energy from talking to our boy, Alex Caceres. Right? Which will be up tomorrow. Question mark? It'll be Maybe? up tomorrow. Sweet. But man, just what a fantastic guy. Yeah, that very, was awesome. very cerebral, very cerebral, and uh, uh, one of the more inspiring conversations I've had. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to everybody hearing it. Yeah, man. I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. Honestly, super cool. Ooh, we're hyping it up like crazy now. Hopefully, people like it. They're gonna be like, "Man, screw this guy. Yeah. <laughs> screw these two dude, guys." All right, these guys suck. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, dude, it was just a long night of fights. Um. I, I want to say I left work yesterday around 4.30. Fights had already started. So while I'm driving, put my phone up on the dash, turn ESPN Plus on. And I started watching mm-hmm. from that point on, uh, swerving in and out of lanes. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, we got a lot to cover, so we can get right at it. Yeah, I mean, how many fights? 15. 15 fights. Uh, moment of silence for the single fight that fizzled on this whole card. Only one fight. And it was uh, Randy Costa versus Trevin Jones. Kind of crazy that only one. Usually yeah. when there's a stacked card like this, fights kind of start falling off to, as we get closer. These Not fights were one. just meant to be. Yeah, like, unfortunately for week, Glover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> last week, uh, we talked about how most of the canceled uh, fights, I mean, that could have made an entire card all, all, all on its own. And uh, not the case this week. And uh, no. we started off with uh, Trevin Jones versus Mario Batista. So uh, what did you think about this fight? Dude, this one, <clears throat> this was cool. It was, dude, first off, the whole prelims of this card were absolutely nuts. I mean, there mm-hmm. were just, there was uh, two decisions, three decisions, four decisions. <laughs> but Five? No, just... <laughs> it didn't feel, <laughs> it, it was just nuts, man. Just pure excitement. Not one boring fight on the entire prelims. Uh, and Trevin Jones versus Batista. Batista, I think coming into this was the favorite <clears throat> um, and was really showing that he's like grown as a fighter, you know, and he was looking so good to start the fight. He was like his his combos were kept him guessing, you know what I mean? Like he was landing heavy shots. His footwork was phenomenal. Uh, his defense was really good. And then and it looked like, hey, he's going to he's going to put on a show right now. And then, yeah, second second round comes out. 40 seconds in, and Trevin Jones just lands this lead, like, shovel hook type deal. Almost like an anchor punch, right? Except mm-hmm. not with the counter, or not with a pullback, but um, just cracked him. And you could tell. It was one of those knockouts where uh, he he got he got hit and was, like, up for a sec, but was, like, mm, like a tree falling real quick. <laughs> you know, it was, like, it, it just kind of stopped. Everything stopped, and you're, like, oh, shit. Uh, Trevin Jones has some power, man. And this, this is... Uh, the start of another not so great night for commentary kind of a weird night for commentary again we're just have, i don't know what's going on with the commentary teams lately but it's it's like uh as soon as somebody's winning the fight all they're talking about is how the guy who's losing is like out of this fight already and it's like i just don't see how he's going to come back from this batista's looking so good all the stuff and it's just so weird it's like in a sport a lot of recency bias it. What was that? Just like a heavy dose of recency bias? Not just that, but like during the fight. It's like, it's an even fight, it's an even fight. As soon as someone starts winning, all they're talking about is why this person's losing and that and that they are losing and that it seems like uh, they need to really change something up. And they're just harping on the guy for losing rather than talking about what's happening and why this guy's winning. And it's, it's, it's like they, they talk about how it's like, they talk about it like it is uh, like a foregone conclusion that this guy's mm-hmm. going to win. You know, it's, it's really weird. and I don't know. It's, it's been uh, not cool. I don't like <laughs> it, you know. It, yeah. and, and it gets to the point where 
they're talking about why this guy's losing so much. Oh, and they're thinking about what his mindset is and what he needs to do and all this stuff. Meanwhile, he's landing shots that they're not even talking about. They're so busy on their conversation that it's like they're not even watching the fights lately. Anik is, but DC and Rogan, I think, are just so comfortable now with each other that it, it feels more like a fight companion. And they're not, they're missing things. They're talking about, oh, this guy's just not doing enough. This is this guy's fight, all this stuff. Meanwhile, he's landing on them. And then they just keep talking and never even bring it up. And it's, yeah. it's really frustrating. Rogan talked about that actually on his podcast. So he loves doing commentary with DC because he, he's just sitting there with a friend watching fights. And I, uh, that's, that's not what that it's supposed to be. The, yeah, it's funny you bring up the uh, fight companion because sometimes that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, it, it, different strokes for different folks. You know, like for me, I love that shit. I love it because I, love it I feel too. like I can just sit back and I'm just listening to a couple guys that are watching fights uh, with me. And they'll, mm -hmm. they'll give some good analysis uh, as well when needed. But yeah. uh, some of the, the, the jokes that they crack and stuff like that, it's just stuff that you don't get in any other sport. Yeah, I mean, I love that too. Don't get me wrong. I love uh, when they were first starting, it was perfect. But it's getting to a point now where it almost feels like it should be a third-party commentary. It shouldn't be the official commentary because they're not even talking about what's happening. You know, like mm -hmm. imagine if, if in baseball, someone just hit a double and they're just talking about what something else yeah. you know it's like oh they're down by three runs and i don't see them climbing back from this and meanwhile some dude just hit the double and they just keep talking about why they're losing and they don't even bring up the fact that he hit, hit a double you know yeah, I see what you're that, saying. that's what it seems like it's it's and it sucks because especially for these guys these younger guys who are trying to start their career out they're trying to make statements obviously ultimately they're trying to make a statement for the ufc to get higher ranked opponents and move, move their way up but they're also we can't deny that um, a large fan base can influence uh, a, a fighter's next next fight. You know, um, popular fighters get bigger fights. It's just a fact. And if they're just talking about, I don't know, they owe it to the fighters to really highlight what's going on in the fight. That's what they're there to do, right? Is explain what's happening in the fight to people who may not know what's happening uh, or may not know what's happening. And it just seems like that's getting away from them a little bit, and it's a bummer. Yeah, well, uh, you know, before we continue, uh, I do want to mention the fact that uh, our podcast is available. On, <laughs> now, I'm going to call this out because last time, Richard Casual got on us for not pointing this yeah. out. But on uh, Apple Podcasts, of course, Google Podcasts, Radio Public Podcasts, Breaker, Spotify, uh, please give us a follow, like, subscribe goes a long way and uh, leave comments whatever we're talking about whether you agree disagree let us know what you're thinking and we just love to go back and forth with uh with our listeners so uh yeah, Rich definitely. And then, didn't forget it this time yeah and then <laughs> if, if you're watching on youtube we have the timestamps down below you know so if you don't care about the prelims and you only want to hear about the main events and stuff like that you can just click the comments or the description and click right to the fight you want to hear about um if you don't yep. want to hear about the prelims Absolutely. Not everybody cares <laughs> All right, so the the next fight, Ruiz Medic versus Alon Cruz, man. Medic looking like an absolute world beater, and uh, everybody was hyping him up. Like yeah. you talk about the the announce uh, announcing team, you know, the uh, analysts, and everybody was talking about Medic going in, his mindset, you know, mm -hmm. and that they're expecting big things from him. Uh, in your eyes, did he deliver? Yeah, he did exactly what he needs to do in the situation that he's in. You know what I mean? He's presented with an opportunity. And he does what he needs to do with it. You know, the knee, his big knee. He, that's yep. the kind of stuff that you, you do to make a statement. You know what I mean? When you're in these positions, that when you're early getting into it, he came to what? Now he's 7-0. and So, man, super What about his, uh, his energy in the post-fight interview? <laughs> I loved his energy. He was just so enthusiastic. And he just seemed like he was like genuinely like appreciative and yeah. happy to be there. And he's like, everybody in the UFC loves their job. Everywhere I've gone, everybody seems genuinely happy. Then at yeah. the end, where he's like, uh, <laughs> train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day, baby. <laughs> and I was yeah. just like, oh, dude. Got the <laughs> Nikias <laughs> quote in there. Dude, just fantastic. And, and not only that, but Nate Nate posted that on his story, the interview. So it's like, see, that's what, the, that's what these positions are for, right? When yep. you're in the prelims like this, you're here to make a statement and – and gain the attention from not only the UFC, but for the, from the fan base. And that's how you do it right there, dude. Flying knee. Uh, and then, yeah, followed up on the ground. And then 
and then great personality afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, did you have yeah. anything else on that fight? Not really. It just kind of that was kind of what was supposed to happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, props, props to medics for for uh, for taking advantage of that situation, and and yeah, I'm excited to see what he does from here. So definitely uh, something it, to keep an eye on. In the next fight with Amanda Limos and uh, Lavina Souza Souza, they pronounce it a little bit differently. Uh, <laughs> man, I really like watching uh, Lemos uh, Chris striking. Dude. And every time that she touched Souza, it seemed like she she felt it. And I'm not saying like, of course, they always feel the punches, but mm -hmm. you can see like every time that she got caught, like there's this like expression in her change. face. Yes, yes. What did you see? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And and going into it, you know that Souza's trying to to try to initiate the clinch, right? Use her judo, all that stuff. And Lemos just staying long, catching on the end of her strikes, and never getting too close, never mm -hmm. rushing it. Um, she went to the ground with her when she dropped her and the commentary team was talking about how that's a terrible move and ultimately yeah but like I said in this situation when you're on the prelims you're trying to showcase yourself so everybody is thinking and the commentary included uh, don't go to the ground with Souza right because you're going to win with your stand up she's going to beat you on the ground don't do that and she's like, here, I'm here to showcase myself. Let me showcase that I can be on the ground with her and that she's not, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, like dead in the water on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. obviously she rocked her and that helps. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a great move for her to go to the ground because it was what, first round? Mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, she was going to have another chance to hit her again. So why not showcase, hey, I can, I can hold my own at least on the ground for a little bit. And it's not like, I'm just going to get subbed right away. Um, yeah, like I said, did a great job of, of uh, instant pressure, got her against the cage, and then uh, just kept her on the end of her strikes and never let her get close to a clinch and just kept dropping her. Yep. Crazy yep. power at 115. Uh, yep. Uh, something to look forward to, right? And then uh, mm -hmm. there was a part on there where uh, Souza grabs a hold of her leg for a little bit. Seemed like she mm -hmm. might be in a little bit of trouble, but ended up being just fine, right? So again, yeah, uh, stepped over the yeah, yeah, an opportunity opportunity for her to show uh, that she's also got some ground game. Mm -hmm. um, the next one, Mister Sean Brady versus Jake Matthews, yeah. uh, black belt versus black belt, and I think they're I love, just showing, I love this matchup. Yeah, showing that there's a couple different levels, even at the black belt uh, ranking, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Brady's top game man was was intense. Really good. Yeah, was really intense. good. Uh, I was super impressed with Matthew's striking. Um, the one-two he was landing was like beautiful. Um, but yeah, he just uh, in that first round when he he dropped him right, he caught the. It wasn't like a full full knockdown, right? But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think it should probably count as a knockdown, right? He caught the kick, lands the right hand, drops him. Went for the submission and got swept. And then ended up on his back. And I think Brady, in that moment, felt the strength a little bit and was like, hey, I, I, I can control this top game in this fight. Uh, and that's, that's such a huge thing to have in your back, uh, your back pocket. You know, once you realize that, uh, hey, I can stand with you. And then if I need to, I can, I can take you down and control you. And that's what he did, man. F phenomenal f uh, fight IQ from Brady in this fight. Um, he's landing the check hook. You know, drop him with a check hook, drop him to a knee. Um, dangerous on top. Super dangerous on top. Was yep. w While he was down there, actively working for a finish the whole time he was down there. Setting up chokes, landing big shots, um, no stalemating, anything like that. Uh, and just kind of exhausted Matthews until he, he could get it. One of the most intense tattoos as well. That back one? Yeah, man. And I thought that he was wearing like some type of like like lay cover or something because the 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 tattoo, the color was just so intense. So yeah. I don't know whether it's just a really fresh tattoo or whether he has like a really nice like lotion for it, you know, or something. He probably has that and and uh he's pretty pale, you know. Uh <laughs> so, no, I mean, True. I mean look at me. It's a good combination. Um, it's a good combination for the tattoo yeah. spot. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just a fact of the matter. I mean, <laughs> True. I'm not talking shit. I mean, no, I'm probably no. paler than him, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Sean Brady's legit, man. Super legit. And I think Jake Matthews is super legit, too. I actually picked Matthews in this one. Um, but uh, 
Oh yeah. yeah, we should I'm talk about our it. we should talk about our picks a little bit later and see uh, how we finished. I don't know if I want to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one, Kennedy Nz Chukwu. Did I pronounce that correctly? Maybe uh, versus Carlos Olberg. I think so. Close enough, man. Nz Chukwu. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I man, think so. I think this is uh, Nzechuku. Man. Nzechuku. There it is. Nzechuku. Uh, I, I was close. I, I like Nzechuku. He looks like um, he's very like. Uh, Like unassuming looking, mm-hmm. you know, he's very calm looking. He doesn't, and, and he even talked about he felt like he wasn't in this fight, but he's always kind of looked like that. He's not like, he doesn't like posture all crazy. He doesn't try to look super aggressive to intimidate or anything like that. Um, but he's got, he's got skills, dude. He's got legit skills. This fight was awesome. I think this one fight of the night. Did it? Did this one fight of the night? Um, well, uh, Olberg, I know that I there's know. a lot of uh, hype behind him, and I believe Olberg was the uh, favorite going in. One of three yeah. city kickboxing uh, fighters for the night. Yeah, and uh, which is crazy because 3-0 in his career, right? Yep, and I think he texted me where he said zero defense. Dude, it was, it was so frustrating, dude. It was so frustrating to watch because Olberg has all this talent with his offense, clearly. Uh, yep. It looked like he was just like seeing everything in there as far as when to land shots and how to land shots. He was so accurate and like devastating with the shots. And then as soon as Nzejiku was like coming back with anything, he was like, I'll take this, I'll take this, and then I'll just give my own. And then the tides started changing, you know. You start eating those shots, that, that'll that wear your gas tank, you know, eating shots like that and then yep. just trying to finish. And it it seemed, I hope, I hope this was not a case of – uh lacking fundamentals with defense and more a case of i heard him so bad early that i just feel like i'm gonna finish this fight no matter what he throws at me and it was that kind of a mindset because you can learn it's easy to it's easy to fix that mindset uh once you get beat like this right you can now go to the drawing board and say hey even if i have somebody hurt i'm not invincible they can come back i need to stay disciplined i hope it's that because it's a lot harder to work on your defensive fundamentals and bring those up uh, instead of a reality check type mo- type moment. So I hope it's that. But dude, I I thought he was going to win the fight, uh, especially when he had him hurt and he was eating those shots. And every time Nzejiku was throwing back, he was just letting him hit him. No, no head movement, no blocking, just eating him. And obviously he was taking a lot. He took a lot of shots uh, his, on his own. But the whole time I was like, dude, that's a dangerous game, man, because because Nzechiku just proved that he can weather a storm. So yep. if you don't get this finish, eventually this tide is going to come back to you, you know. And I was like, "Fuck, dude, just block, <laughs> block." You have good footwork, you know. You're sparring with some of the best strikers in the UFC. Show it, use it, use it. You know, yeah, yeah. And and eventually Nzechiku just stayed par for the course, weathered storm, weathered storm, weathered storm, and just kept landing his shots eventually dropped him you know it was a yeah. fantastic performance from Nzechiku and with Nzechiku uh in his high guard the entire mm-hmm. time and you see uh Olberg trying to take advantage of that and uh he hit a lot of shots to the body ripping those body a shots a lot of shots to the body uh which would have put a lot of uh lesser men down but mm-hmm. man he, he weathered the storm and it was just a case of Olberg uh kind of blowing his water a little early too and you know, mm-hmm. maybe some of that adrenaline dump from it being his first fight in the UFC, a combination of, of everything yeah. was just a perfect storm for him to then uh, lose the way that he did, man. He, he mm-hmm. caught a clean right from the, uh, Nzechuku. Yeah. Clean right where you see part of his mouthpiece kind of pop out a little bit too. Yeah. And I was just like, ugh. Sat him down. Um, never fully out, right? He never went fully unconscious. So nope. that's cool for whatever that's worth, you know? Um, <laughs> True. Yeah, hopefully this is a, an eye-opening moment for him and he can move forward because he has so much potential, you know. Mm-hmm. And for Nzejiku, he talked about how he's been out for so long, right, that he just never felt like he was getting started in the fight. Um, and and uh, you could see that. It makes total sense just from how the fight started, you know, and, and having to weather that storm. And then, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see him if he can continue to be more active, you know, if he doesn't have to have a slow start like that, if he can start on, you know. Um, because his defense looked good, his his offense looked great, um, and obviously the mental check is there. You know, he's not going to give up when it gets hard. And he also, um, he talked about how he has so much confidence in his gas tank that 
he just doesn't have to worry about that. It's never a worry for him. And you hear the Diaz brothers talk about all that all the time. You know, that's such a big thing to have in the back of your mind and to not have to worry about something like that, where clearly Olberg might worry about that going forward. Yeah, fights, you know. He's, Very true. You don't want to have that second guessing while you're in there. All right, so yeah, on the, uh, the the next fight, Tim Elliott versus uh, Jordan Espinoza. Uh, dude, same old Elliott, you know, just crazy this is, pressure. This is one of the most savage fights uh, I've seen in a while. Dude, the, the blood is dripping from the top of uh, the shit Elliott's talking? head. Dude, and then uh, the way that he was, you could tell, like, he was just using that to his advantage and rubbing, like, his forehead on it. On, well, you heard the James uh, Krause, right? What did the James Krause say? When he split him, uh, this is another time where the commentary was talking about Jordan Espinosa is not doing anything. He's like he's just he's he's lost this fight already. All this stuff. And they're talking about that, and and while they're talking about it, he postures back and then lands a gnarly elbow on the top of his head, and he's bleeding instantly. No one's talking about it. They're not talking about the cut. They're not seeing the blood. And then like thirty seconds later, they're like, I think there's someone's cut. And they're like trying to figure <laughs> out. He's like, how did he cut him? And it's like. Are you not watching the fights? You guys, are, your one job is to watch the fights and talk about what's happening in the fights. That's you know, hilarious. we get it. This guy's on his back and he hasn't had any success. We get that. You have to say that once. You don't keep ragging on it, ragging on it, ragging on it, and then completely miss a big moment with with an elbow like that, right? Obviously, it wasn't close to like finishing the fight or anything, but it's it, it's significant for to the fight. But once he landed the elbow, you hear the James Kraus recognize that he's bleeding so much. And he yells like he yelled something like like uh like poured in his eyes or something like that or like like bleed into his eyes and so instantly Timmy like, just head down yeah. just let it pour right into his face it was so brutal and did you not hear the trash talking no oh dude I don't know the details behind this um but while he had him up against the cage forearm in his throat tim elliott says something like uh he's like i heard you i heard you choked a girl out in in 2018 and he's like you uh you beat you beat women motherfucker and like talking like just saying like that it just kept saying it and they, they cut the, the audio and they're like whoa like what, what what's he saying and then he's like he's like your girl messaged me or something like that and then uh and then espinosa from the bottom said you don't know the whole story <laughs> what which is the- Fuck. Not the most confidence-inducing thing to say <laughs> what? in innocence, you know what I mean? So, I think this was very personal for Elliot, and he wanted to grind this dude out and just... This fight was savage as fuck, dude. Just the whole pouring dude. the blood in his eyes and just beating the shit out of him on top for three straight rounds while he's telling him he's a woman beater. Crazy. Wow. I gotta I, go I, back I, and I watch could, that I again. Could, I couldn't find anything if it's true or not. There doesn't look like there's any like cases or anything like that that came out of it. I I don't know. It would suck if he said that and millions of people were watching it and it's not true, right? If you're Espinosa, that would be one of the worst things that could happen to you is a millions of people hear that you're a woman beater and you actually aren't and you didn't really get to talk about it, you know? Um, but if it is the wow. case, then Tim Elliott, ride or die, you know what I mean? For sure, bro. <laughs> Wow. I just don't know. The knight in shining armor, Tim Elliott. No, dude, it, we, we've always talked about how we enjoy watching Elliott. Always. Right? And always, man. He's always so game. Uh, but yeah, this was definitely one of those fights where, like, at the end, you take a look at the octagon and you're like, dude, fucking war. Yeah, dude. You know, straight dude, up, man. He was busted up, man. This was, he what was. was the, there was, this is like a 30 24, 30 25, something like that. Oh, I don't remember the exact, uh, just exactly. absolute dominance, dominance from Elliot. I yep. love seeing Elliot fight, so I'm glad he got a win here. Same, same. I hope, All right, well, and I hope I'll go back and watch sake, that. Yeah, I hope for the drama's sake. I hope it's not true. I hope he, uh, nobody did get beat up behind the scenes. You know, I again, but if it happen. is true, there is revenge. Yeah, thanks to Tim Elliot. Yeah. So and the uh, James Krause. <laughs> oh, dude, and the James Krause. We can't leave him out. Can't. Can't leave him out. Uh, next one. Let's see here. I believe that was uh, Kai Kara France. Mm-hmm. Boy. Versus Rogerio Montorin. I know you've been Crazy high fight. on Kai Kara France. Huh? 
I know you've been high on uh, Kaikara France for, yeah, quite for so some time, long. So. <laughs> and there's yeah. been some ups and downs, but man, never, never in a boring fight. Every time he fights is, dude, that Roy Vall fight? Come on. Oh, that Fucking fight was money, nuts. dude. Yeah. That fight was so money. Dude, and this fight, just normally you can escape one or two rear naked choke attempts. And then by that third one, they're going to get it. This guy must have defended like seven or eight rear naked choke attempts. It was, Dude, it was... And he had it under the chin at one point, and they're like, oh, it's over. And then grab the hand, pull it down, grab this one, wrist control, turn a little bit. And I was just like, normally, and that was like the fourth attempt. And he just kept getting out of it. He put on a clinic, man, on how to defend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The rear naked really choke. Really did. He really did. Yeah, really, really did. And the, the fact that he was, I, in a couple cases, he would stand up. You know, with uh, Bontrine on his back. He did that, mm-hmm. I believe, twice. That's not easy to do, man. Super and then, hard to do. Even after he was able to break out of the uh, rear naked choke, he saw that he still had a lot of bounce and mm-hmm. uh, very good uh, movement. So it wasn't like he was drained trying yeah. to survive the, the rear naked choke. It was actually the other way around. Yeah. You know, from uh, Bontrine trying to hold on to that body triangle for so long. Where Especially you when more someone flat stands up. After that. When someone oh, stands yeah. up and you got the body triangle, you got, you're squeezing your legs. You're squeezing them. Um, yeah. And and great, great fight IQ from Kai to mm-hmm. to know, hey, this I just got dominated this round. I need to earn some respect back in this fight. Obviously, he probably wasn't going to do anything in the round that was going to win him the round for the judges. But uh, you have to earn the respect back of the fighter you're fighting just to put that question mark back in their mind for the second round saying, hey, this, I, I may have dominated that round, but the guy's not gone, you know? So... He brings it to him, and then with, what, five seconds left? Five seconds I don't left. Know. Fucking... I don't know, but the way it ended was hilarious, too, with Bontari taking out his mouthpiece and just launching it at him. Yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> well, first, there's just first so off, much confusion. Yeah, first off, the, the, um, the, uh, the combo that he landed and just the mm. absolute tenacity. You love seeing I, – I've talked about it multiple times now where Robbie Lawler fought Johnny Hendricks the second time. And was just laid on up against the cage. And then at some point you say, am I going to just sit like this for the next 30 seconds? Or am I going to go try to finish this fight? Because I feel like I probably need to. And you just throw caution to the wind. Not throw caution to the wind, but you just put everything into it. And you just attack somebody. And that's what Kai did. You know, it was measured too. He got up. He's landing his shots. And then just goes fucking bananas on him with that dude. With that uppercut. And then you see him just drop like an ATAT. And Kai just puts his hands up, starts walking away. And then, <laughs> then we're going full circus. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What the fuck just happened? We well, see crazy. Eugene uh, point, like saying, like, do go finish it, go finish it. Like you see him, yeah. like pointing at him as he's going over there. So he runs back up ready to just hammer fist. <laughs> and he's like, dude, what are you doing, man? Like, like yeah. <laughs> stop. Well, and then Bontari looks for at him. That. For what? For the stoppage. For being making it unclear. Well, it was I, I blame an, Eugene. It was it was definitely interesting because I, I think what why why people were questioning it more was because again the commentary in this case they were like, What happened? He never stopped the fight. He never stopped the fight. But if you look at it clearly, you see Herbie go over there, double under pull, <laughs> pull Kai Kara Franz off of him, turn him mm-hmm. off to the side, then go check on one Yeah, It was clearly over. And because he was checking on him. Maybe because he didn't wave the fight off fully. I think he. I think he did though. I think Kai was just already running around the octagon and didn't see that. And so when Eugene thought maybe the fight's still going, he told him he's like, "I'm gonna go do that," and then just ready, dude, to lay that hammer. Dude, it, it looked ready. like it was about to be bad. That could have yeah. been. A, that could have been a shit show. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I was thinking about, I was like, man, um, like I was, when Bontrine was laying there, and I was like, man, he must be, he must be pretty out of it. But he wasn't too out of it because when he saw uh, Kai Kara Frank coming back, he bounced up right away. He was like, this mother... Like, and lunges yeah, it at the him. mouthpiece. <laughs> but oh, you dude. saw the replay though, right? From that angle where it stayed on him because he, he was he was out, out. Because he tried to get back up and just like shot out sideways, you know? When you try, mm. And it's like, oh, no, dude. And he fell no, back he, down. He got rocked, man. He got hit twice, in, twice on his temple, you know, because he got yeah. hit with that overhand right first. And it looked like kind of slid, but it got him right like on the side mm-hmm. of his head. So he was a little wobbly from that, and he hits him with that combo, finishes it again with another right to the temple. So you, you could tell yeah. he was hurt, man. He was really yeah, hurt. Yeah, I think it was a great, a great stoppage. There was some confusion, but I don't think it was Herb's fault. And 
uh, obviously we've both been kind of quick to to point out some refing flaws, but I don't think this one had any flaws, you know? Yeah. No, uh, uh, let's move on to the next fight with uh, Askar Askarov and <sighs> Joseph Benavides, man. Joseph Benavides. This is, a, this is a sad one for me. You know I'm a big Joseph Benavides uh, fan, and for the longest time, it was safe to say Joseph Benavides beats anybody not holding the title. Yeah. It was safe to say that for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And now you see with uh, Askar Askarov coming in, now 14-0, um, that Benavides is definitely on the tail end of his career. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's still 28-8, and eight, you know, still a damn good record. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you start questioning uh, why, like, why are you doing it, you know? Uh, because I don't think he's going to get another title shot. I don't think it's going to happen, especially if Figgy's still the champ, you know? Um, but you start thinking about it and you start thinking, do you beat the guys in the top five? Oscar Askarov, Manel Kopp, uh, Pantoja, uh, Figueredo, Brandon Moreno. I don't know if he beats any of those guys now. Um, I don't know what his contract is. I'm sure he gets paid a decent amount, you know? So maybe he wants to fight out his contract. Yeah. Uh, but at what point are we taking punishment for... You You have to sit and think, are we taking punishment for money or are we taking punishment to get the belt? What are we... Like, why are we doing it, you know? Um, and you hate to see this, that, that point of someone's career, especially someone who clearly is such a great guy in Benavides, you know, has always been like a staple in the MMA world as being a good dude, you know? Um, yeah. Has he ever had one controversy? Not that I can think of. He's been around forever. And, Not and one it's one of those stories, uh, a bounce back story, you know, when you hear about his past, uh, you know, his addiction to drugs and, and mm-hmm. see where he's at now. Uh, so he, he's had a feel good story with where where he made it but uh every, all good things come to an end all good things come to an end and uh yeah. joseph's just he's nearing that end you know yeah. I, I think he could still have some fun fights within the top 10 mm-hmm. um but uh do i want to see him turn into kind of like a, a gatekeeper uh where like let's say a kai car of france where they say okay like how how ready is kai car of france and they yeah. put up against a joe benavides to see if kai car is ready for for that next step that might and happen. And so on and so forth. It could. <laughs> that it could very well happen. happen. It, it could yeah. very well happen. So. And I'll be uh, honest, as soon as you said that, my initial reaction is I do want to see that. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's not like he's getting knocked out cold every single fight. You know, he's still very competitive. Um, yeah. I, I think it's one of those things where his style just might not work anymore. Where, where the UFC is at, you know? Yep. It evolved Absolutely. so much, you know. And on the flip side here, Askar Askarov looked really, really good. I was really Phenomenal. impressed with his striking, man. Uh, yeah, he, that front kick he, to the body, man. He's the real deal. He is yeah. the real deal, man. You know, so uh, he came in ranked third, Joseph ranked mm-hmm. second. So we could see that just quick flip, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe a couple more spots dropped for Joseph Benavides. But mm-hmm. And then you, you, we some, look at the fact that Figgy and Moreno are booked. Right, Askar mm-hmm. Askarov probably one fight away from a title fight. Yep. Um, I think you probably do him versus Pantoja, right, for okay. the number one contender. Um, yeah, I think you probably do that. And meanwhile, Figgy and Moreno fight. Um, we don't have to worry about a trilogy with them, right? Because the first one was a draw. So whoever wins the next one's going to be, that's going to be their cemented, right? Yep. Um. That uh, him him versus Pantoja is a very fun fight, <coughs> super fun fight. And that should be a good one. Uh, we'll we'll see what they decide to do here in the next uh, few weeks, and uh, may- maybe Askarov's gonna want to take a some time off. Who knows? Or who knows? He might say, I doubt "Hey, it. I'll, I'll just wait for the winner of uh, Moreno and Figgy." Maybe I I don't think this was billed as a as a title eliminator, especially being on the prelims. You know, I I, I think he probably has to do one more. Um, well, maybe you can't build it as a title eliminator because if Joseph Benavides wins, 
they wouldn't give him another shot at the title. True. But True. Askar Askarov, with his ascension, might have a shot at the title, depending on how this uh, that fight goes against Moreno and uh, Figgy. Yeah. But uh, Yeah, true. True. You know, so, all right, uh, we'll move on to the next one here. Kyler Phillips versus Song Yadong. This was a great one, fight. One of my favorite names in the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> Song Yadong. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, it's great. And, and this fight was, was awesome. This fight was, was awesome. I remember really in the preview we, when we talked about it, when we first went over like the full card, we were talking about how, oh yeah, it's going to be cool to see Song Yadong fight. And we were like, well, Kyler Phillips, no slouch. This is going to be a fun fight. And this, up until this point, was fight of the night for me. I don't Ooh. know about you. I thought this was, this was a fun fight, dude. Kyler yeah, Phillips just came out so long and accurate. He was just instantly tagging him with big shots. Oh, this is going to be a quick night. And then Song Yadong is just so durable, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I love all the different hairstyles of Kyler Phillips, the evolution of his hair that we've seen yeah. uh, since he's joined the UFC. But, no, he's the real deal, man. And uh, Song Yadong, he, he was on a nice win streak before this. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it was a nine-fight win streak, if I remember correctly. Was it nine? Um, dude, it, it's up there, man. It's up there because Song Yadong has been doing work recently. So just taking a look. Well, he at had it that right draw now. with uh, Cody Stammen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fight win streak. Yeah, eight fight win streak. So he was on a tear, man. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So I I had picked uh, Song Yadong going into this because of that eight fight win streak, uh, and because of his name, and and because uh, of your eye favor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and because of your, exactly, but uh. <laughs> Dude, Ky- Kyler Phillips just again proving that he's going to continue ascending. He should be uh, breaking into the top fifteen. Yeah, I think so because man, bantamweight's so fun right now, dude. It is. It's so fun. He has you could see like the the skills and the tool set that he has. If if things start getting even more refined and he really starts coming into his own, dude, he's a legit threat, super legit threat because he's uh, no slouch on the ground. Uh, and then he came out here and outstruck Song, Song Yudong. So. so Song Yudong came in ranked 14th into this fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a Cheeto Vera ranked 15th. Uh, Who Song just they, beat. Yep. Uh, Cody Stammen. Marab. Uh, I'm not going to butcher his last name. There's some fun fights Charlie, in there, bro. Yeah. There's some fun fights, man. Uh, Bantamweight's so, stacked right now, dude. It really is. Looking all, dude, a bunch of killers. Yeah. Murderer's Row. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, let me see here. Do we have anything else on that fight? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Good thing. Uh, Bantamweight's so stacked. Good thing there's no uh, like weird stalemates going on with like the belt or anything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can cover that later, I guess, huh? Uh, <laughs> this next fight, it was uh, Dom Cruz versus Casey Kenny. It was a battle of, by the way, I, I know it's a fake account. It, at first, it had me going, but if anybody <laughs> wants a fun, Twitter account to follow Keith Peterson UFC and all it is is some dude pretending to be Keith Peterson just trolling <laughs> Dom Cruz nonstop and it's fantastic <laughs> it's fantastic but uh man Dom Cruz still had his uh his speed in there his quickness the awkward footwork is still there he had you know, some speed uh, I don't think he had his speed though okay you so know? considering it to be fast but just not as fast as he used to be yeah yeah dude because there was a while where Dominic Cruz was it, it was so unnatural. It, you're just like, what is happening? It was so fun to watch. And it still is. I, I loved this fight. This fight was He's, fucking awesome. He seemed to be in great shape, mm-hmm. but he did seem to get winded a little bit faster than it usually uh, takes him to get a little winded there. Yeah, dude. You know, you know what I love about when Dominic Cruz fights is, and we'll talk about this obviously, but not, just, not the immediate. Th- this one was great. The immediate post-fight interview, but he always does like 30-minute press conference interviews because dude the way he holds a press conference is is top tier in the ufc you know going back to like when he lost to cody uh it was like a 30 minute press conference of him talking about the loss and what it means and all this stuff and dude just just listen to him answer questions and field questions like there's no he's just so articulate you know and and someone asked him like what was the biggest surprise in this fight with casey kenny most people are like Oh, nothing really surprised me. We were ready for this. We were ready for this. And he said the thing that surprised him was uh, uh, he started kind of saying that. He started saying, he started to say like, no, not really. We expected this. And, 
But then he corrected himself and was like, you know, you know what? I was I expected him to fade with his gas tank much earlier. I was surprised that he like hung in there for the first two rounds, like full gas tank. And, and he was like, I thought he was going to fade quicker, but he didn't. And I was like, I fucking love that, dude. Dominic Cruz is mm. as it's weird because he can be so humble sometimes and then come off so arrogant other times. And you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, man, he just made Casey Kenny fight, fight his fight, you know, mm-hmm. just fantastic movement. I thought I was kind of worried because of the smaller cage, right? That it's going to hinder his movement. And I feel like it kind of did, honestly. But dude, the amount of times that, that Kenny whiffed his punches, it's so fun to watch for me. <laughs> I fucking love watching that. No, for sure, man. And uh, it was a weird call out, you know, at the at the end. With, uh, who was it? I'm Hans or something it. like that from, from Monster. I fucking uh, don't, I don't know the guy, but every time he always pops up in my, in my Instagram, like explore page. I think it's because I, I do so much like MMA stuff on, on Instagram, yeah. but he always pops up and it seems so fake and corny and fucking, I hate every time I see him pop up, I'm like, fuck this guy. No, <laughs> no you know, he might be a great guy. I don't know. Uh, well, it doesn't sound like that according to Cruz. Well, have you seen his stuff? On Instagram? No, like as, as soon as, because I was like, man, Hans, who, who's this guy he's talking about, right? So I, I check and I'm, I Google uh, Dom Cruz and the very first thing that pops up <laughs> calls out Hans, who is this, yeah. right? And so I click on that and that's all I really know. And like when I saw the picture, I was like, okay, I've seen him before. Like you said, in your yeah. Instagram posts and stuff like that, but never really thought anything of it. Mm-hmm. Um, start reading more into it and see that Dana White has called this guy out on his shit. For being roasted super fake, him. oh, roasted absolutely him. roasted him, and yeah. uh, that Hans guy deleted his post after Dana roasted him, and and then you have Dom Cruz doing this now, you know. So it, I mean, it doesn't sound like he's the best guy out there. Just from well, I don't, I don't know if Dominic Cruz was. I still can't fully tell if he was being like kind of like sarcastic about the whole thing and it was more friendly, but I'm, I kind of feel like it wasn't uh, I, because. Dude, because all the posts that I've seen of Hans, it's always these bullshit monster commercials that are supposed to be stealth stealth advertisements in social media, which I already fucking hate. And it's videos of like DC talking with a bunch of guys holding a monster that's like supposed to be like casual. And then he like sneaks up behind him and like snaps it back or like smacks it out of his hand. And then DC like turns around, looks, sees him and then like chases him away. And it's like, I fucking hate that. Like it's yeah. it's so fake and so hard to watch, and it bums me out whenever I see the fighters participating in it because it's like, what what are we doing? And then you hear Donna Cruz say he's forcing people to pose with them for monster sponsorships, and that sounds about right. Yep. <laughs> you know the and the thing that makes me think more that uh, Dom was serious about this was because uh, during the post fight interview. Or press conference. Yeah. He talks about how he's like, dude, this guy sends me a text message saying, hey, Again, gold if standard I don't, press conference. If I don't, yeah, if I don't comment on his post, then he's mm-hmm. going to take money away from me that I used to provide for my family or put food on the table. He's yeah. like, so that doesn't sit well with me. And he's like, dude, look dude, at me. Look how I earn my money. I get beat in the face. My body's beat. That's how I earn my money. And this guy's going to hold it up for social media yeah, bullshit. Yeah, man. Dude. It, so that's why I, I think it was it was more serious for Cruz than anything else. So something must have triggered him before the fight where mm-hmm. Cruz didn't do something where this Hans guy is like telling him, hey, you have to do this or, or we're not going to pay you out uh, for yeah. this fight or whatever. And Cruz is probably like, fuck this guy, man. Yeah, I, I, I've always – that guy's rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, he always posts videos of him like throwing question mark kicks and stuff too. Dude's had like – it looks like he's had like six back surgeries and like he's like the least flexible person I've ever seen <laughs> trying to throw these kicks. Fuck that guy, honestly. And and people are shitting on Joe for the political comment during the post fight interview because as soon as he starts calling him out and it gets a little, wait, what's happening? As soon as that happens, Joe cuts him off and he's like, well, I'm sorry this had to get political, blah, blah, blah. And best, best comeback ever from Dominic Cruz when he's like, it's not political, Joe. This is monster energy. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so funny. All calm, dude. But uh, people were shitting on Joe for that. But I, I think... Um, 
I think they got in got into Joe's ear and told yeah. him to cut. Like, him do we got to cut it? We got to cut yeah. this. And everyone's like, dude, Joe, why did Joe call that political? Dude, there's nothing political about it. And it's like they're probably yelling at Joe, cut that off, cut that off, cut that off. And in his mind, he's like, ooh, this is dicey. And is in the moment and says, people are mad at him for using the word political. Maybe I don't know it. But he's also in the moment not expecting that. So I don't yeah, really... Yeah, and it, I guess it depends on how people take it, right? Because it could be politics within work, politics yeah, within USC, kinda. politics within, you know? like So it, that's probably what he meant. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, it was, it, the, the way that he responded back, Dom Cruz was pretty hilarious. Yeah, I, I feel like this is also... Could be one or two things. It could be legit. You know, Dom might actually have beef with this dude. Or this is a way to get Han's name out there on a UFC pay-per-view and now everybody's talking about him, including us, and people are searching him up on Instagram and he's getting more attention because that's what marketing is all about and we might all just be completely feeding into that. Maybe. I hope that's not the case, but it might be. I hope that's not the case. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Do you have anything <laughs> else on that fight? Uh, Props to Casey Kenny, dude. Uh, that's a tough fight in Dominic Cruz and uh, Dominic Cruz looked really good. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so Alexander Rakic versus moving Thiago into the main Santos. event or main card. Yes, moving into the main card. So, uh, man, I text you. Talk about predictions in the middle of this fight, and I said I almost called this to the T. Yeah, right. Uh, where Rakic, what he needed to do as much as possible is get Thiago Santos up against the cage, get some clinch work in, uh, maybe some dirty boxing in there. Uh, mm-hmm. he, you see him get a couple foot stomps, really worked on head positioning to make sure that he made it hard for Santos to be able to get out of that. Yeah. Um, but whenever he was in that position, he didn't have to worry about the Mojeta coming in. Yeah. So, uh, man, he had a really weird distance finder too, Rockage. And I'm sure you noticed it like as soon as the fight started off where he has his arm out and he's going up and down yeah. just like constantly. He just uh, couldn't get around him. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but dude, Santos still has that crazy power. Yeah, and you saw yeah. it a few times. Yeah, um, I had Santos winning this fight. Oh, did you? I did. I had him winning the first. It was close. I had him winning the first. I had Rockets winning the second. I had Santos winning the third. Um, Santos. Not only did he outstrike him in the first and the third, he outstruck him total in the fight. Obviously, that doesn't matter. But mm. Rockets didn't do anything other than some leg kicks and a couple body kicks and hold on the cage which for me isn't um shouldn't be scored well you know um i thought santos was landing i mean he did he landed more uh he landed more in two of the rounds in a fight that's super close and not a lot of action um i just feel like he did more I get he was on the outside the whole time and Rockets took the center. Um, but again, for that, for me, taking the center just doesn't mean much for me in scoring also, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I get the hype behind Rockets, but uh, I'm just really not sold, honestly. You okay. Know? All right, so, you know, t- just taking a look at the rankings, Thiago Santos, what's next for him? I believe that's two losses in a row from uh last loss to uh, three losses oh well john jones right yeah you have john jones glover Teixeira, and now uh alexander rockage mm-hmm. uh what do you do next with him um yeah uh i mean that that division is still super fun you know um i know he, he, here's what i was talking about with uh, one of my coworkers is he was like nothing happened in that fight run it back and I was like, no, don't run that back. I never want to see that fight again unless yeah. one of them has the belt, right? Um, I think they both shouldn't move up in the rankings. Neither of them should run, could, should move up. Uh, and guys beneath them should should uh, should get a crack at their spots now. Um, I think Thiago Santos needs to fight someone in the rank below him. And I think uh, Rockets needs to fight somebody below him. I know uh, Reyes and Yuri are both booked. I say you go on Kalaya versus Rockets. And Ooh. you go. Oh, that'd um, be a good fight. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, Have we seen go, uh, Smith versus Santos? I don't really want to see that. Um, 
maybe Ozdemir or it'd be a huge jump up. Uh, but Jimmy Crute, uh, okay. I'd like to see him get a crack at the top five because, dude, if you're, let's be honest, this is, um, knowing what we know now about the light heavyweight division in the belt, um, we know that Glover's next. Mm-hmm. And we know that this is the fight that puts you right after Glover. Um, and neither of them really, really went for it, right? It's easy to say that when you're the one fucking sitting on the couch watching it, you know? But the reality is there's people like Uncle Iev, there's people like Jimmy Crute, there's people like Yuri Prochaska who are yep. hungry, who are hungry and will take that opportunity and, and launch off of it. That, that's that's now two very very safe performances from Rockage in a row. As he gets closer yeah. to the belt, he's fighting very very safe, and uh, uh, it's a bummer because he has so many talents. He is so skilled, you know. He's a dangerous guy, and he's just not using it. Playing it safe, very safe. You know, and I mean, at the end of the day, how safe are you going into a steel yeah. cage against somebody like Tiago Santos? Yeah, no, but what very. I mean is that he's he's definitely taking the more cautious approach in the way that he gets his victories. You know, mm-hmm. um, he's fighting not to whole, lose. Yeah, exactly. And this guy's he's dangerous. When you take a look at the way that he's built, the power that he has, mm-hmm. uh, his mobility at his size, you you yeah. think that he'd be coming off with more impressive wins. At the end of the day, he's coming out with a he's w, winning, mm-hmm. right? So it, that might be part of the reason why he says. Why should I change anything? I'm going to continue winning. Yeah. At a certain point, they can't deny me the title shot by, you know, ring off five, six wins in a row against top five opponents. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what? I don't know, man. It's a yeah. tough one. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just the decision on this one bums me because in in the first and third rounds, man, Santos landed more and was more accurate. That yeah. that means more to me than center of the cage, you know, or clinch work with no threats, you know. Uh, by the way, uh, your boy here picked Rockage. Yeah, guess who picked Just Santos? That guy. <laughs> if you can't tell, <laughs> <in> my bias. <laughs> All right, man. Do you want to move on to the next one? Wait, what's up? It like cut out. Do you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. All right, so let's go. Uh, Islam Makachev versus Drew Dober. Dude, uh, Drew Dober had a great walkout song too. <laughs> you know, but it didn't go uh, so well for Drew Dober. Yeah, uh, I really like Drew Dober, man. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, he's a fun have, fighter, uh, man. We had some family friends over last night. You know, my wife and Natasha were both like, "He's a looker." Yeah, he is. He's, he's a looker. A... He's he's a little dime piece. But uh, Isam Makachev said, uh, "I don't care if you look like a dime piece. I look like, like every other Russian fighter in the world, <laughs> and I'll do what I do right now." Dude, his wrestling is just a whole nother level. Dude, the transition to the armbar was, was so slick, so slick, just so quick, and he's got his hips over so fast. And man, props to Dober for for defending that armbar. That was yeah. a nasty spot. That was a nasty spot, dude. Um, but man, Makachev just controlled every moment of the fight. And we continue hearing this about Makachev. We continue hearing it uh, from DC, from mm-hmm. uh, Habib. You know, and you you think to yourself, like, how much do I put behind these words? Because they're teammates. They're boys. Yeah, they're boys. You know what I mean? Uh, the the way that DC messes with. Uh, Habib, you see some videos of him messing with uh, Islam Makhachev uh, that way as mm-hmm. well. But, dude, when he shows up like this, and again, Drew Dober's no slouch, man. Dude, that's my biggest takeaway is I hope people don't look at this as a layup win for uh, Makhachev. Nope. Because, dude, this is – Drew Dober's real right now. He's very legit right now. And and Makhachev just, just took everything from him. <laughs> you know? Yep. I called sub in the second round. Took everything he's worked the, for, huh? He took everything he's worked for, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> people were shitting on, uh, on again on Joe. This is, so it's weird. I shit on the commentary to start this episode, right? Um, but it seems like there's a lot of like Joe hate nowadays, you know, um, for things that I don't necessarily think are the worst things in the world. There's other yeah. things going on that I don't like with the commentary lately, but people are shitting on him for not bringing up the fact that uh Makachev had him in a in an arm triangle because guess what it wasn't an arm triangle he was in half guard and he was on the other side it's not an arm triangle so mm-hmm. the people like Joe's the black belt he should have he should have been talking about that arm triangle all this stuff 
dude, that's not a position that we see very often. That's a, a sneaky choke that was more about pressure and yep. honestly probably Dober's build, you know, very muscular. Um, when you're muscular like that, chokes like arm triangles or things like that, things like arm triangles uh, are worse, right? Because if I'm like this, look at this. You see this lack of shoulder muscle right here? That's an open spot. But when I'm jacked and that's pressing on my neck, arm triangles are half, you're getting choked by the other guy, uh, 50% is their choke, 50% is your own body choking yourself, right? So people are, are shitting on, on the commentary team for missing the submission. I didn't think there was any threat. All of a sudden he taps and it was like, oh shit, that's, that's yep. a real, that's a pressure situation right there from Makachev for recognizing um, the situation they were in. It's not like he set up an arm triangle, hopped off the side and, and got it. I don't think even Dober realized what was going on until it was too late. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you see at a certain point where he's kind of thinking about like, what's my next move? And then all of a sudden he starts wincing a little bit. Then yeah. all of a sudden he's tapping. Uh, you know, and I have seen a lot more hate towards a Joe. And I think it's just that contrarian culture where mm -hmm. it's like, man, he has so many people that, you know, love him. I want to yeah. hate him. I'll be part of that small group that just hates him. And no matter yeah, what I'm he does. Different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> The way you said that, though. <laughs> um, and, like, people posting, like, instead of Joe Rogan, it's Joke Rogan. Yeah. And it, Joe's it's just turning like, into a casual. Doesn't even know about fighting. I, I will say this, though. The interviews, he stumbles through the post-fight interviews a little bit more than he used to. But it's like anything else. Whatever yeah. you do, if you have less reps, you, that, that's yeah. bound to happen. It's like anything mm -hmm. else. Uh, but still, man, uh, to see the respect that these fighters have for Joe Rogan too, at the like yeah. every single fighter, almost especially the newer ones, like man, it's always been a dream to talk mm -hmm. to you. You know, uh, my buddy loves you back home, and the way that Joe handles the praise, he's like, "Hey, tell him I said hi, man," and I'm a fan of yeah. yours now. You know, it's just like, dude, this guy's so fantastic. But dude, uh, Makachev, I, I hope that he stays active mm -hmm. because the more active this man is, the more people are going to realize quick quickly that yeah. he, he's the real deal man he's somebody to look out for in that division yeah and, and he called out uh tony ferguson you know he's not he's looking for a jump now he's looking he's like hey i'm here now yep that's uh which i mean that fight is interesting of course yeah of course it is i think that's he, an interesting fight man yeah i mean um he probably wins that fight I, I would be very surprised if he's the underdog going into that fight um it depends on how much break dancing Tony Ferguson does before he goes. In. That's really <laughs> for, for it me. It's just on. that division, man. Let's yeah. get that division going, dude. How is Ally Quint is still in the top fifteen? <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, that's because he sold three houses last month. <laughs> yeah, it's it keeping him just, up there, man. Just get it going. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you on that one. All right, man. Anything else on that fight? Uh, no. Mark, uh, it was weird that. The narrative going into this, as we got close to the fight, I, I saw a lot more of Makachev's overhyped. And then all of a sudden, everybody knew he was going to win this fight. Or yeah. he's acting like he, he has the correct amount of hype or whatever. But um, yeah, man, he did, what he, he did what was expected of him, basically, right? This is what everybody way, thought he does. And he did your, it. Your boy, at the end of this fight, uh, two for two so far on the main card, just saying. Two for two so far. All right, so the next one. Some Th this is on where this it one. gets very, very interesting. Aljamain <laughs> Sterling versus Piotr Jan. Uh, Aljamain coming out with crazy amount of pressure right off the bat. So much energy. A lot of energy, but zero pacing himself. And I know that the plan mm -hmm. is be first because when you're first, he he doesn't he he you can't get hit from him, you know. And not just and first, him, but not just first, but throw everything you can think of so he's constantly trying to make reads and just stuck with your and it was working it was working and when, when you see that in the first round and yon was a little more hesitant mm -hmm. i still feel like yon had the bigger moments in the first round so when yeah. he was connecting i felt like it was a more uh significant strikes were still for yon well he dropped him the first right mm -hmm. um this was this fight was going exactly how I thought it was going to go up until it didn't. Right. But, uh, <laughs> it, it was like Aljamain, uh, hope he wins, but I had Jan winning. Um, and I thought Aljamain, Aljamain has way more tools 
Uh, but unfortunately, he has so many tools that there's some holes in pretty much everything he does. That Jan is so sharp with his one skill set that he'll find those spots and he'll find those holes in Aljamain's crazy uh, like repertoire, right? And and that's what was happening, you know. Aljamain starts off, check out these spinning back elbows, these leg kicks, these takedown attempts, these uppercuts, these jabs, these switch stances, all these crazy stuff that you're just like, what the fuck's happening? All these tools. But then Jan, patient, finding his spots, drops him in the first. And that was kind of like, man, what a great fight, though. What a great matchup, you know? It was, it was fucking yeah. awesome what was happening. And uh, your boy picked Aljamain Sterling to win. Three for three so far oh, this God. main card, just so you know. This fight went exactly how that was going to go. <laughs> I called DQ illegal knee fourth round my pick. So, uh, <laughs> Fucking nuts, man. What a crazy you know, and, fiasco. Dude, again, it's so frustrating. And I'm online, and I'm on like a UFC uh, like group uh, chats on Facebook, and there's people like, dude, he was totally acting. But, dude, he took uh. a knee right to the temple. Mm-hmm. Right to the temple. And it's so easy for us to sit here and say, oh, he shouldn't be the champion. He should be an Oscar winner for best actor. It's like, come on, man. This dude. guy took a mean strike. Do you see his head, like, bounce? Yeah. Dude, you want to know the, rea- the real reality here is if Give me that the real legal, reality. The real reality. The real, real reality. If that yeah. was R. Kelly real talk, if that was <laughs> the, if that was legal, that fight would have been called a knockout right there. They would have yep. called that fight. No, it doesn't matter how he's reacting after the fact. That knee was so gnarly that if it were legal... If he were if he were crouched and he ate that knee, they would have called it right there. That's how brutal that knee was. So yep. fuck all this all this acting stuff. The only reason that exists is because they waited so long to call it. Mm-hmm. They they should have called it sooner. Uh, I yep. get Mark Smith had pretty much already decided that it was over and that it was going to DQ him pretty much right away. Let's be you honest, know? Mark Smith a little bit of a rough night last night. I thought he did great in that fight. That was great. I thought uh, he handled that so well. I can't remember who it was. Remember that it just took an absolute beating for yeah. like. Uh, yeah, it was fucked up. But yeah, uh, you know, let him be a warrior. And uh, but Mark <laughs> Smith in this one, I thought was perfect, man. Because the if this wasn't a title fight, it would have been over so much faster. But the fact mm-hmm. that the belt was on the line, it's a big deal. You want to make sure you get the call right. Unfortunately, that stretches it out longer, and people start thinking he's acting because it's taken so long and all this stuff. But the reality is, dude, Mark Smith, you could hear him talk about, this is going to be a DQ. I told him specifically, yep. it's intentional. There's no way he can continue. It it got drawn out, right? But because they have to go through these these series of checks and everything. But the acting, uh, the, the angle, the acting angle is fucking, anybody who, who pulls that doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about and should never input their opinion in, in fight discussions. And, and, and you know, it's we're not going to have a... A Will's Wisdom today because it, it's a longer card that we're covering. But one of the things that I did want to ask you and something that was brought up in one of these discussion groups as well was knees, soccer kicks. Somebody said they should answer. be legal. And I already know your answer, right? The The frustrating part is, again, people coming in and being like, well, no, because they're looking out for the, the fighter's safety. And they're like, okay, well, what about, uh, let's say, Masvidal's flying knee versus uh, your boy, what's his name? Um. Why can't I think of his name right now? Funkmaster. Funkmaster, yes, sure. We'll no. go with that. <laughs> no, that's Aljamain, right? Uh, what the fuck's his name? Why can't I think of it? Why can't we think of his name right now? That's that's how much he's falling off the map real quick. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I got to... need by Masvidal, and I have Yeah, but the, <laughs> the thing issues. is, like, and they're like, oh, that's totally different. How's it mm-hmm. different? You know, Masvidal had a running start. Dude. Flying years. Me. You want to know the real, 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 real reality? Aljamain wouldn't have been in that position if knees to grounded opponents were legal. He would not have been sitting there. Exactly. He would have gotten out of that position. That position exists and is so dangerous because it's illegal. Ben Askren. Sorry, I don't know why I couldn't think of this. There name. we go. Ben Askren. Ben Askren. Uh, but, dude, Dem- Demetrius Johnson had the same take. He, he, said, yep. uh, he said, the fact of the matter is you can't sit in that position. We've, we've, and we've talked about it. These positions have become safe. Because mm-hmm. that threat's not there. People holding on to ankles. Dude, they're getting kicked in the face in Ryzen. They're getting stomped on the head in, in pride, you know? You don't sit in those positions in a fight. 
is as a supporter yeah. is it a fight you know we have to decide because we try to do both and the reality is dude you can't you cannot do both <laughs> Exactly. You know? and, and I think it's just such a flawed way of looking at it when they talk about, well, you know, they're, they're just so much more at risk. And it's like, yeah, but the thing is that the fighters train for specific situations. Yep. And if they know, hey, if I sit in this position, my arm now has to go up. I have to use one hand to post to stand up and the other one no, to guard. You, so no, on and if, so forth. If you're in the same exact position and knees to ground opponents are legal, guess who falls back to his back and tries to pull guard? Algernon. Yep. Instantly. He doesn't even go to that position if they're legal. He does not yep. go to that position. Um, fucking bring back kicks, stomps, knees to the head on the ground. It's who are we yeah. kidding here? And who you are know, we kidding here? The the last thing I want to say about this is the way that you knew that Aljamain Sterling was really hurt was because at the end during the interview, oh, he true. says, "This was on the way of being fight of the year and one of the best bantam." weight title fights of all time and i said dude he's really concussed yeah <laughs> because <laughs> did that's you how you T- can tell he was really hurt yeah did because because jan was starting to run away with it a little bit oh he know? was yeah um he was. did you see but tj's good for me i saw this going down the way that it <laughs> went down exactly at this yeah. point i'm what was it three for three at this point on the main card so yeah did you see tj's uh comment on it <laughs> no, but I saw Henry Cejudo's comment to it, dude, and it was fucking hilarious. Where he dude. said, uh, <laughs> "What he say?" He's like, "Yon, do you need me?" But he spelled "need" like K N E E D. Do you need me to come back and save the division? That knee was dirtier than T J Dillashaw's piss. <laughs> yeah, dude. T J said, and the Oscar goes to at Fake Master for best actor in a title fight, and Piotr Yon needs a crash course in the rules of the sport. He was once champion in. Hey, Piotr, now you're a cheater too, bitch. Wow, okay. <laughs> so That's says, a little aggressive. And then Aljamain says, you cheated your entire UFC career and you have the balls to call someone an actor. You lost your manhood when you decided to inject yourself so that you can actually compete. I hope Sandhagen tools you like he did in practices before. <laughs> oh, dang. There you go, man. Dude, hey, sometimes TJ, these, uh, these Twitter don't throw wars. Stones. No. TJ, you know, you don't no, throw stones in the glass house. You could probably throw stones at uh, maybe somebody else that's been roided up throughout their entire career. Yeah. Maybe a Chael Sonnen. Maybe, you <laughs> know what I mean? Like, y'all could throw stones at each other. But, man, yeah, uh, TJ, I think he should just continue to lay low until he comes back uh, yeah. and has a couple wins under his belt again, if he does, mm-hmm. and then go from there. But, man. I, I also hate the last the last thing I want to say about this too is is the verbiage intentional, you know, because people are taking the fact that they called it an intentional uh, foul as he did it. He fouled on purpose. Mm-mm. He didn't knee a grounded opponent on purpose. It didn't. Anybody who thinks that can get fucked because you think he, he wanted to get rid of his title. Yeah, let me knee him in the face so I lose my title. That's not what intentional yeah. means. Intentional means it wasn't an accident. He didn't mm. catch him as he put his knee down. It was intentional because he chose to throw the knee. It's not intentional because he tried to throw a knee to a grounded opponent and wanted to foul him. All these people saying that Piotr Jan is, did it on purpose, need a grounded opponent on purpose. It's, why the fuck would he want to lose his belt? And also, whoever was in his corner that said to knee him, like, don't bring him back. Dude, and people are saying that that didn't happen either. But, dude, you could clearly see him. He's like, There's he's one there. person. They yell something. He looks over, yells something to them real quick, and they yell it again, and then he knees them. He no, literally asks like, them. When, when they put the camera on his corner, and you see like two out of three of them, I don't know who they were, but they're like, uh, punch him, punch him. And one guy's like, yeah, yeah. And after he knees them, and he goes, yeah. And everybody's like, no. And that guy's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just sits back. I'm like, bro, come on. That one guy. Don't bring him back next time. Yeah, just, you're out. Just you're gone. leave him in Russia. Leave him in Russia. Piotr gone. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> the next one. Amanda Nunes versus... Uh, <laughs> I won't be mean. Megan Anderson. Yeah, don't even say it. I won't uh, even say it. Yeah, but, this one exactly how everybody thought it was going to go. <laughs> Dude, again, there's levels. Uh, Megan Anderson. Look, I'm sure if I go in the octagon with her right now, she will mop the mat with me. Yeah. Kick my ass, choke me out, high kick me to the next fucking galaxy. Yeah. But uh, we're talking about her going up against the greatest female fighter 
of all time. And when we take a look at the division, again, take a look at the division rankings. <laughs> Anybody, take a look at those division rankings and tell me who's next in line. Yeah. You won't be able to. <laughs> you know. Because there's no rankings. Yeah. Shout so, out, uh, and- shout out Andrew, uh, Toasty. He was like, he texted me after. He's like, dude, just send her to Ryzen so she could clear out that division too. <laughs> and I was like, at least she'll get to fight with a good rule set. <laughs> dude, but when we think about Amanda Nunes and just, for me, this is my story of the fight, I guess. By the way, I don't think we've called out a story of the fight for the last couple of cards that we've covered. It's been a while. It's been a while. But just what she's been able to accomplish. And uh, again, I had some friends over last night and they're like, man, Ronda Rousey, uh, I remember her being dominant when she first came in too. But there's a mm-hmm. difference because I, I feel like the women's divisions, women's mixed martial arts were still catching up to yeah, uh, the evolution of mixed martial arts. And mm-hmm. she was very much a one-trick pony, right? Uh, I think about like a Kat Zingano who rushes her. She does a judo trip and she lands straight into this awkward arm bar. Yeah. And it was over in a few seconds. But as soon as you start getting mixed martial artists in, they're, you know, are more well-rounded. Then you start getting Ronda Rousey that started getting knocked out by Holly mm-hmm. Holm, then Amanda Nunes. She just didn't stand a chance anymore against these well-rounded fighters. Amanda yeah. Nunes, I, I don't see anybody beating her anytime soon. No. The only fight to make would be 135. Don't and it'd be it. Shevchenko. Oh, okay. Shevchenko, you thought I was going to say my dark horse. No, I, I just I keep saying uh, I keep seeing people saying that that she should fight like a bantamweight male, and I thought that might be where you're no, going. And I was like, please no, don't. No. Although uh, don't, don't. Henry Cejudo I know. says that he wants to be the <laughs> quadruple yeah. C. But uh, you know, I, I think about Shevchenko going to try to be a champ champ herself. Mm-hmm. Amanda at one thirty five, and that could be such a sellable fight. Mm-hmm. Other than that, Amanda continues wiping out the divisions. Well, especially at 145, right? This, this, might, this might have been the last fight at 145. It could very well be. And she's you know? going to go down for a while as the last, you know, 145 women's yeah. champion. So, yeah. Uh, when I take a look at it, though, I don't know if you remember, I have been calling Juliana Pena mm-hmm. the dark horse of the division. Um, she's probably fighting her soon. Because I hope I think so. she she just said that I think she posted something about Holly Holm pulling out of her fight, and I know they want to book Amanda right away. The problem is Amanda's definitely larger right now for one forty five, so I don't know if she can make a quick cut to one thirty five. You know the correct way, but they might just be like, "Fuck it, Pena versus." <laughs> if Holly Holm is pulling out, then let's just book her for the title. Because what else Dude, are we well- doing? We'll see what happens, man. But uh, I, I've been saying Juliana Pena is a dark horse. Still think, still this think levels, that Amanda Nunes, know. yeah, is a whole nother level from all the other women on this list. But uh, I guess just for shits and gigs, why not? Let's see Juliana for Pena go <laughs> for shits and gigs. Yeah. But man, she she's just fantastic, and she's got that mom power now. Mm-hmm. I loved all the pieces that ESPN did about yeah, cool. Amanda Nunes. And their baby, um, you know, going into the fight and Nina answer off and just hearing the conversations about Nina saying, well, like she, Amanda compares the baby to our dog a lot. And I'm like, hey, please don't compare our baby yeah. to a dog. But like you, you continue remembering that th- these are humans, man. These are people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. you know, they put on their pants one leg at a time. But when one does, she's the best female fighter in the history of UFC, so yeah, the, Joe had this was probably one of the best callouts the whole night from the commentary was when she did go to the ground. She started setting up the submission. Joe said, "This is actually merciful." Yep. It's like fuck, dude. This is a title fight. Absolutely, dude. And again, <laughs> we we talked about when like uh, Limos was hitting uh, Souza, mm-hmm. and you see the demeanor change, bro. When I don't even think Nunes this is a demeanor change. Hit Megan Anderson. I think Megan at that point started thinking about her life and what got her to this point. You know, like the movies where it's like, you might wonder how I got here. Yeah. And like, like just, her? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that, there was that moment. Cause dude, yeah. it, after, she, after she got clocked with that, right. And you saw her stand there with her guard and Amanda's teeing off and she, yes, deer in the headlights. And she's like, what do I do now? Yeah. Where do I go from here? What, 
and you're, Joe's absolutely right, man. That was a merciful finish because she could have beat the shit out of her if she wanted. Yeah, could have been way worse. Could have been way worse. Seeing her bring the baby into the octagon at the end. So they're both uh, talking Megan to the babies. <laughs> cool. Oh, dude, I fucking love that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I fucking loved it. Uh, do you have that baby looks fight? hilarious, by the way. Dude, the hairdo? <laughs> Fantastic. I love <laughs> it's it. so funny, dude. I love it. Dude, it uh, it's just all around little great rocker. story. One of the yeah. better stories of the night. Dude, I, I fucking love it. So, uh, yeah. By the way, your boy picked Amanda Nunes. 4-4 oh. four four at this point. <laughs> Went out four on a limb, four. huh? Picked, picked a man. Dude, minutes. I was feeling a little crazy that night, yeah. and I'm glad I did. Uh, yeah. The next one, Jan Blahovic, Blahovic versus uh, Israel Adesanya. This fight was fucking awesome. It was a good fight. It was a chess match. Yeah, dude. Those first three rounds were fucking so much fun to watch. I mean, Pins the whole fight was great for me, but, but it was so fun to watch both of them react. They're all there setting up their traps. It was fucking awesome. There's another one where the commentary was a little fucked up, but you think so? I think so, because dude, all they were Adesanya talking about heavy, super Adesanya heavy. And you I know, get but it, I don't right? think He's it was the just the commentary. It, it was the build up, the lead up. Everything mm-hmm. was Adesanya has a chance to become a champ, champ. Yeah, Adesanya, this. Let me tell you about the history of the champ champs of the sport. Let me show you these highlights from McGregor, from Triple yeah. C, from Amanda Nunes. He has the potential to now be another one. By the way, my name's DC, and I've been the champ champ too. You know, yeah. and it's like <laughs> that that was everything leading up. Mm-hmm. So I could see why the conversation in the middle of it was Adesanya, yeah. Adesanya, Adesanya. It, it just sucked. It sucked because it was another one of those ones where they're talking about who's winning more so than they're talking about what's happening. And they're missing shots that Jan was landing. They're missing shots that Izzy was landing. When Izzy was landing, they're like, oh, Jan's hurt. Jan's really hurt, you know? And it's like, <laughs> dude, uh, Jan might have been staggered once. They didn't talk about I, uh, Izzy got rocked also I, in yep. the second round, I think. Um, up against the cage, there was a scramble right there, and he got hit hard as fuck. And, there were, there were, dude, there was one point they were literally talking about how Jan's biting on the feint so much, and he needs to do something because he's fighting Izzy's fight. And meanwhile, he lands a clean overhand right, super clean. And they just keep talking about how he needs to do something. You got to do something, Jan. It's like, dude, just fucking land maybe one of the cleanest strikes of the whole fight. And then when they were doing the in-between rounds replay, they showed that, that punch. And you could tell they were like, when did that happen? Like, <laughs> like, they weren't even paying attention, dude. They were just talking about how great Izzy was and how Jan yeah. was playing into Izzy's game the whole fight. And Jan was like, dude, hold my rope. I'm about to take this dude out. You know, dude. Again, some of the fucking dark arts that Jan mm-hmm. has been traveling with, yeah. and this guy's been an absolute monster. He's been on a tear. Yeah, you know, uh, and I've seen a couple other fighters too that were kind of playing down the win. First of all, uh, other thing, John Jones, just stop, just stop. That just enough's enough, dude. Like he, yeah. I, I think he's just trying to stay relevant too. He hasn't fought in a while. Uh, you know, he's talking shit to Izzy for wanting to go up and trying to become a champ champ. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, let's slow your roll right now because you're trying to go up right now. I know. And let, let's just wait and see what happens with you, man, because you, you might go up against a Stipe. Yeah. And things don't go the way you want. You might go up against a Francis and you wake up a week later. Dude, honestly, Izzy versus Jan and John versus Stipe could end up looking very similar. Yep. <laughs> Very similar. It could. I was surprised that Jan wasn't grappling more up until that fourth round because um, I thought for sure that was going to be his path to victory. Uh, ultimately, I think he was he that kind of just cemented his victory, whereas I think he he already had it, uh, I think. But it, by it, the way... You could uh, argue probably two and two going into the fifth, um, but it it might have been 3-1. I, I had going, a 3-1. Yeah, it, it very well could have been 3-1. I had a 3-1. Uh, did it seem to you like and I don't, I haven't seen anything, but did Izzy hurt his right uh pinky? Uh he might have. Um The very first overhand when he hit the fence? No, 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 no. The very first overhand, he came in like an awkward position because Jan tried to duck under it. So he like adjusted his punch and came down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards you see him like bring it back and he like pulls. Yeah. And then from that point on, like you see him continue to like Kept doing adjust it, yeah. and yeah. So I, I don't know whether that had anything to do with it. I, I still love Izzy, man. I'm still yeah, super high on him. this is awesome. It was a great fight. 
Yeah, this is a lose. Or this is a win win for Izzy. Absolutely. You know? Doesn't matter. His now his first his first professional loss comes with a fight that has a built in excuse. Right, He's a smaller guy. Uh, if he won, he would have been double champ. So like. And he's taking the loss very well, it seems like. Very well. I already posted the picture of Jan punching him in the face with the yeah. pizza emoji. <laughs> yeah, when, when he said Polish power, I, I ate it. I ate yeah. that shit or something like that. And uh, he's also giving props to Jan, saying, you mm-hmm. know, if, if he were to lose to anybody, he's glad that he lost to Jan. Uh, yeah, a dude, class act. How, how good was the, the post fight when they're in the cage? And he, <laughs> That's the first time I've seen Herb Dean smile in a long time. I know. Izzy was like, <laughs> Izzy was like dude, you got a really good guard. And Jan was like, oh, I'd love to be your bodyguard. It's like we won. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. And he was like, "Does it pay well?" <laughs> and he was like, "What?" Wait, what? <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic, man. That's fantastic. No, it was uh, a great fight, though. Yeah, and uh, man, I, I'm I'm starting to fall in love with Jan Blahovic. You know, you uh, and it's not necessarily because of him being a champion, him beating beating uh, Izzy, mm-hmm. but man, it, he just seems somebody that's really enjoying the moment relishing everything you know that's just coming his way right now yeah i uh, just had a baby too you know he's got some crazy fucking background stories so a uh, crazy you know story around his the, the little rope he carries around now yeah it's There's, it's, he's an interesting guy man yeah dude if if and you and the, and the reality is due to that division the people who are coming up Jan matches up very very well very very well the him versus glover is gonna be awesome too that's, that's gonna a be a good fight, fight. That, him versus yeah, yuri's uh, awesome him versus rockage i think he fucking tools rockage uh I'm yeah excited. but we're looking at somebody that can hold the title potentially for for quite some time yeah and and i start thinking now man it would have it would have been nice to see john jones versus uh Jan versus Jan. it would have been dude it would have been good for John's legacy. I think John probably would would have beat him. Um, but and who knows? Maybe he gets knocked into the next dimension by fucking Ngannou and decides to come back down and try to regain uh, the title mm-hmm. at light heavyweight. Who knows? Yeah, and and I don't want to act like Jan is invincible or anything like that too, because he he did just not super long ago get knocked out by Thiago Santos. So it's uh, yeah, I mean, but not was he carrying the dark arts with him at that time? <laughs> I don't know. That's <laughs> maybe, the thing. Maybe. <laughs> that's the thing it's not just yon they're fighting they're fighting other powers you know what i mean yeah. so uh man that's all i got for that fight do you have anything else uh no no it was a great fight though it was a great fight it was a great card uh i picked style bender going into that one so that was the one fight i had incorrectly for my main card picks <laughs> uh if anybody wants to see how we did on the overall card uh check us out on uh story of the fight on instagram uh story of the fight on twitter and uh, I posted the full card picks from both Will and I there. So uh, you could use that card. And later on down the road on our next uh, previews and our next picks, you could say, maybe I should pay attention to these guys. Maybe I shouldn't. All I know <laughs> yeah. is that we, we, we did me. okay. <laughs> right. Dude, I... Mine was not a good I saw Al Jermaine Sterling fight the exact same way when I'm telling you, fourth, quor- uh, fourth quarter, fourth round <laughs> DQ, legal knee to the head, I called it. So uh, yeah, man, that's all I got. You have anything else? No. All right, everybody, thanks for listening to the story of the fight.